How great of a side hustle are ATMs? Will ATMs make you great passive money that require a little time each and every month? Today we'll be talking to Thomas Berkeley, who's been in the ATM business for several years now and is an industry expert. We're gonna see how much profit you can potentially make with the side hustle and what is needed for you to get started with ATMs in your city today. Also, a huge thanks to Thomas for all the great advice and tips during the interview. Please show him some love and check out more of his great videos all about ATMs on his channel. Now, let's jump right into the interview. All right, so now we're gonna be jumping right into the questions. Uh, first off, I was just wondering if you could tell us about your YouTube channel and what your videos are about. Yeah, yeah, so uh, my YouTube channel, the name of it for those who are interested is just Thomas Berkeley. So that's B-E-R-K-L-E-Y. I uh, just type that into YouTube and you'll find me 100%. Um, and basically what we do on that channel is we teach entrepreneurs and investors on uh, all the different tips and tricks that they need to start their own ATM business. All right. Awesome. And how long have you been in the ATM business? Yeah, I've been over in the industry for over a decade now. And um, I actually started my journey with teaching other people uh, probably about four years ago, 2018. Okay, awesome. And there's just like so many side hustles out there. So how do you end up choosing the ATM business, ATM business over other side hustles and businesses out there? Yeah, um, well, actually, my journey really started back in the, in the military. I was in the Air Force for about nine, 10 years. Um, and during that time period, I actually met my first mentor who he just so happened to be from Ohio as well, where it's just where I'm from. And um, he really um, basically there's areas in Ohio that are really country. And so they're really small, very small uh, populated areas. And because of that, he was able to really uh, shake hands with the small businesses, the credit unions, things of that nature. And because of that, he kind of saw the the profitability of ATMs and how that worked. And he got into it from that aspect. And um, he kind of knew that I had more of a entrepreneur um, background and it was something that I really wanted to pursue. So he said, hey, I have this new side hustle here for you. I can teach you this if you're interested. And then once you get out, you can try it. And so the rest was history. I did the remainder of my time while I started to educate myself with him. And um, once I got out of the military, I placed my first machine and then, you know, the rest was history from there. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And thank you for your service. I really do appreciate it. So. No problem at all. <laughs> but yeah, so it sounds like a mentor and a, you do have one-on-one -on -one courses and we could kind of go into that more details and later on in the, the video. But for the next question I have is like, what do you need to get started? Could I just buy an ATM, find a location and I'm ready to go? Or is there a lot more to it? Yeah. You know, in the perfect world, you would be able to do just that. In any other industry, any other business, you would be able to do just that. Um, uh, the the one thing that's really odd about this industry is that getting the ATM is actually the very last thing that you're going to do. Um, the very first things that you need to have, you need to have a dedicated LLC for this industry, and you need to have a dedicated account for this industry as well. And once you have those things, the next thing that you're going to have to uh, acquire is the actual location itself. So you're gonna go and look for that location itself. Um, and then once you have that location lined up, everything's good to go. You have to have what's called a site location agreement, which is a contract that's gonna be between yourself and that business owner. And once you have that signed, then you jump into finding your first processing company that you're gonna work with. And the processing company, you can consider them the Wi-Fi for the ATM and you can consider the ATM the computer. One of those things, you can have those things separately, but they do not work without the other. Um, and so by having those two things, you're able to connect to what's called the bank network, which is controlled by the credit card companies. And that is how your customers will come in, utilize that ATM and access their bank accounts. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And kind of going back to the LLC, I know at least when it comes to like real estate, there's a lot of like friends and family that I talk to or other people online their their first step they always say they need an llc but in real estate at least that's usually a step that you don't really need until later down the road and the people use that kind of as an excuse not to get started but with atms you would say it's like definitely a requirement then yeah it's definitely a requirement and here's the reason why um in a lot of cases, like just like what you said, there's a lot of industries where you can be a sole proprietor. You can just, you don't even have to have any type of business formation whatsoever in a lot of cases. But in this industry, the big concern um, just kind of surrounding this entire industry is money laundering and identity theft and things of that nature. So when you're trying to get things set up with the bank, 
these banks are aware of that. They are, they are aware that there's drug dealers in the past that have utilized ATMs uh, for the wrong reasons. And it's because of that, they want to see that if anyone is coming in and trying to get into this industry, that they're on the up and up. If you're taking the time to create an actual business to do this, then you're showing uh, goodwill essentially. And you know it allows them to kind of weed out those people who would have in the past just walked in there, opened up an account, sole proprietor, whatever the case may be, they can't be tracked in a lot of cases. And that's what happened. Um, and so that's why the LOC is extremely important and is probably one of the most important steps um, in this particular industry. Okay. Yeah, it's good to know. So basically it sounds like without the LLC, the banks wouldn't take you seriously and then you can't partner with them and then basically run your ATM business. Correct. Correct. Right. They will spin you around five times and send you out the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then what about for like, how much does an ATM machine actually cost? Is this, you know, a couple hundred or a couple of thousands of dollars? Um, they're, they range. Um, it, typically, I always recommend there's one or two machines, um, two of which that I really like, the Hyosung Halo 2 and again, Mega 2500. Those are two of our favorite ATMs. Those machines typically cost around 2200 bucks, 25, 2600 bucks out the door with taxes, depending on your state. Um, and then we also can go up from there. We got $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 ATMs. But basically those increases after, after those initial two that I just mentioned are basically um, purely aesthetic uh, purposes. So they're being priced by, you know, maybe they have cameras on them. Maybe they just, they look sexier. And that's the reason why they are uh, charging more for them. But the standard ones that you want to have are the two that I mentioned because they're the most cost effective and they're the most uh, compliant as well and the easiest to get parts for. Okay. So maybe if you're just starting out the ATM business, you could maybe just pick one, maybe the, the lower price ones that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you really are kind of familiar with the industry and you're, you know what you're getting into, then you can also get refurbished, um, certified refurbished ATMs from the, straight from the manufacturer for around 1900 bucks as well. And then when you place in these orders for the ATM machines, it sounds like you want to do it right from the distributor and manufacturer. You don't want to go on like eBay or Facebook marketplace. Is that the case you would say then? Yeah, because... <laughs> It's so funny. I get DMs all the time on Instagram with people sending me pictures of uh, freaking 1987 ATMs that they found at a, uh, a yard sale or they found something on, on um, you know, Amazon or eBay. And the reality of it is this. Every single ATM is coded to the owner. And what that means is there is a master key that's electronic. A lot of times people are getting their hands on these ATMs and they don't know anything about that. They know they're just going to go and sell that ATM. So those electronic master keys will lock you out of that, that, that ATM completely. So if you don't have that code, you cannot do anything with that ATM, even if that ATM is brand new. And there's really nothing that the manufacturer or the processing company can do for you in that situation. So I tell people that if you were to go get something from eBay, that you get all of that information. But even then, there's no guarantee that that information is going to be correct and or accurate. Um, and that's going to cause you to be either in a situation where you have a um, outdated ATM, which is going to cause compliance issues, which is going to lead you to a fine or a lawsuit, or you're just going to have a big paperweight because you can't do anything with that ATM. Um, so I always suggest that you go straight to the manufacturer. Um, the processing company and the processing company can also double as the manufacturer as well. So they can, a lot of times you can get an ATM from one place and get processing from another place, or you can get ATM and processing from the same place. It just depends on what uh, what uh, company you're going through, but I definitely recommend that you are getting your machines directly from them and not from yard sales, uh, you know, eBay, Amazon, any of that stuff, because it's, especially when you're new, because you don't know what to look for and it's just gonna be a big mess. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I actually yeah. Yeah, never knew that you could potentially get locked out of an ATM machine. So that's, mm -hmm. that's yeah, a great tip right there. And the plus two, if it could save you the headaches, even if you may save a couple hundred dollars up front, it's not going to be worth it in the long term. Yeah, because a lot of times they'll you, you'll see these ATMs, they go for 500 bucks and that's enticing to a new person that's new to the industry. They're like, hey, I'm going to get some uh, some decently priced machinery. And it's, this is one of those things where the price is non-negotiable. 
And if you're getting anything under than $1,900, which was which is a certified refurbished ATM, then nine times out of 10, that, that machine is completely out of regulation and you're just gonna set yourself up for a lawsuit. Okay, yeah, that's great to know. What about like kind of moving on to some of our next questions? What would you say, like how do you find uh, a good location to place the ATM? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a multitude of ways um, to actually uh, find their location. One of the most common ways is to just kind of do the traditional hit the pavement. Um, you know, you go into a business and you have a conversation with that business owner. Another thing that I uh, talk about a lot, too, is going into Google and um, just typing in, for example, barbershops near me. That's going to get, always give you at least four, five, six pages worth of businesses that you can reach out to. Um, and so you are going to have that conversation with the business owner. You're going to convince them of the uh, benefits of having an ATM. We, we can we can discuss that too in a minute if you want to. And when you go over those benefits with that business owner, and then you strike up that conversation, you guys negotiate, and then you sign your site location agreement. Um, so it, it's really simple. The process is simple to find your first client, but the reality of it is it is hard because it does take some conversational skills, knowledge of the industry, and just really knowing your stuff, you know? Okay. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. What type of uh, businesses did you, would you say typically have an ATM that, you know, would be easier when you're doing your Google search for stores in your area? Um, yeah, I mean, any, any business that is a cash-only business, any business that... Um, any business that utilizes cash and card can be can really be a, a great boom. But just to kind of give you some examples, we will work with barbershops, salons, gas stations, smoke shops, dispensaries, strip clubs, bars, nightclubs, um, even even weird, even weird, more niche stores like you have Mexican restaurants and you have like uh, restaurants that are um, uh, me Mexican uh, bakery was one location that we found for a client the other day. Like there's a lot of niche businesses as well. And as long as they are, though, it's basically when you think of all the times you've ever needed to use cash, those businesses are the best businesses for us and the ones that we go after the most. So we don't go after the Walmarts, Targets, all that stuff, which would be nice, which would be nice. You'll be a millionaire very quickly if you did that. But the problem, though, is that Walmart and Target, for example, they're only going to do big deals with the banks. And they have big deals where they will have a bank in the Walmart. They'll have the, uh, that bank will have their ATM situated inside of Walmart. And so what we're doing essentially in this industry is we're taking the businesses that the banks do not want to work with, which is your local mom and pop shops. Banks don't want to touch them because it's not profitable enough for them. And that's where we come in. We're sliding in there and saying, hey, we'll work with you. Don't forget about the banks. We got you. We're going to give you better customer service than they ever could. And so that's how that's where we really shine, because we're dealing with these business owners that want to work with the banks, but the banks don't want to touch them. But yeah, there's like the, the niche. They were saying that these big organ, big companies, Walmart, Target, that they don't operate in the small and mom and pop stores. And that's where you guys come in and you place your ATM. But like you said, what places do you need to actually use cash? That would be a good spot for an ATM. So what about uh, when it comes to like negotiating these places, say you find a barbershop that is willing to put your ATM there, how much do you pay them to have your machine there? Yeah, well, there's a there's a common misconception in the industry right now where people are saying, hey, you have to give the business owner something. And then people who know nothing about the industry might come to you and say, hey, why wouldn't you pay that business owner anything? It's their business. And that's completely wrong. Um, whenever you approach a business owner, you do not pitch to them, this is how much we're going to pay you. And the reason why you don't do that is because they're already getting two major benefits from having an ATM in the business. The first benefit is they're saving thousands of dollars every single year by having an ATM in their business. The reason for that is because if you've ever used a credit or a debit uh, card inside of a business, you, you guys know you swipe your card, you type the pin, whatever you do that business owner has to pay a fee of anywhere from two to 5% on that transaction. So not only have they lost money on the cost of goods, but they're losing money on the processing fee on top of that. So now they're losing thousands of dollars every single year to these processing companies. And so by having the availability of cash in that business, some of those people that come in there are going to use cash. 
And now every time a person uses cash, that person is saving 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks every single day, which equals to out to about a thousand, a couple of thousand dollars a year. Um, secondly, they're going to see an increase of business or foot traffic in their business by at least 20 percent. And the reason, reason I say that is you just kind of put the scenario out there. Let's say you have a convenience store, it has an ATM in it. There's a barbershop across the street. Barbershops are typically cash only. So that barber is going to send a new customer over across the street to that convenience store to use that ATM. You as the business, as the ATM business owner are going to make money because your ATM is there and it's getting used. But the business owner now has a new client because that person that came from that barbershop they might say, hey, this is a nice place. I might buy me a couple of snacks or something for my, on my way back across the street. And now, because that ATM was there, that convenience store owner just got a new customer. And they just got a new sale. And they just saved money on that transaction because that person used cash. So you don't have to offer them anything up front. Now, you can offer them something, but you will use it only as a negotiation tool because some business owners are going to be like, hey, that's cool. I see the benefits, et cetera, et cetera. But what is the financial benefit for the owner? So at that point, then you can start to negotiate what that might look like. You know, typically, I never go more than a dollar and I start at 50 cents um, because you want to make sure that uh, at the end of the day, it's your business and you have to make money. So you never give that business owner more than a dollar. Um, but we always start at 50 cents and, and then work our way up and see what, just like in any other negotiation. Um, a lot of people are screwing themselves because they're immediately going in there saying, hey, I'll give you X, Y, Z. And they didn't have to do that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great tip right there. I feel like especially if you come in showing all of your, your hands, the, the cards, you're going to mm -hmm. put yourself in a bad negotiation power. So it goes back to like just mentioning all the benefits that come with having an ATM and how, like you said, it could increase uh, sales and, and customers. So after you have a location, you have your ATM in there, you have the agreement with the actual uh, business, how much are you charging uh, your clients to use the ATM? Yeah, so uh, typically search charge, just to kind of like give you an average across the, across the United States anyway, uh, we're looking at anywhere from $2 to $3. Um, two dollars, two dollars and three dollars and fifty cents, uh, realistically. Um, but we're seeing the sweet spot is between two dollars fifty cents and three dollars. Um, I have a student in Hawaii who's charging four dollars and some change because that's what the surcharge is in that particular area. So he's killing it right now. But that's not always the case here in America, unless you're in like a strip club, airport, uh, casinos, those kind of places. You'll see a lot of demand. astronomical, yeah. <laughs> astronomical surcharge amounts, and you're gonna. Anyone, in, whoever has an ATM in there is rich automatically off of one ATM. That's what I'll say to that. But um, essentially, it's between two fifty and three dollars. And so every time someone uses that ATM, you'll make three dollars on that transaction. Okay, kind of yeah, it just goes back to where the location, how much demand is basically what you could charge then. But right, so the, basically, the more in, the more usage an ATM sees, the more money you would make to the tune of. Um, you know, the lowest amount that an ATM would typically see in a good location is around 250, 300, and they can go all the way up to making a thousand dollars a month in profit. And um, it, it, uh, it, it, it kind of scales from there. And the more ATMs you add on top of that, the more money you make. But how much time does it uh, require to maintain an ATM? Is it something that's pretty passive or you can set it and forget it or are you going to have to keep checking on it weekly? Yeah, it's pretty passive. Um, and, and the great thing is when I first started, and I'm old, I'm old school, and so is my mentor. And that's probably the reason why I really love social media and everything now, because when he was training me, we didn't have the option to um, have apps or anything like that, that we could take a look at and just kind of see our back office. Now, for those of you who are curious of what that means a back office is basically the area where you're going to be able to see all of your transactions see how much money you've made for the day see how many cars have gotten declined etc cetera, etc cetera. and this could come in the form of an app or a website and so we didn't have that back when i first started but because we have that now you never have to leave the house or go to that business to know what's happening to that atm or what's going on with that atm now, in terms of actual time frame uh, that it takes to manage this, it's probably only about 15 minutes to 30 minutes every, uh, every month. 
Um, now, obviously, when you get a brand new location, you're going to visit that location, you know, two or three times throughout that month. But that's just because you're going to be spending that time understanding the cash flow, how much traffic is coming in here, how much money should I put in here to uh, make it so that I don't have to keep coming in here every single week. I can just make it down to once a month, which is the goal. So to go there, fill it up once a month, go about your day, collect your deposits every 24 to 48 hours. Okay. So yeah, it just depends on location and then how much money you're going to be putting in there. Uh, how often do you have to restock the money? Sounds like every month. And I guess how much money are you putting in it? Yeah. What, what I always recommend is I recommend not, not putting any more than $8,000 in the ATM at one time. Um, most ATMs can hold up to 20,000 bills in a lot of, in, in, um, on average. And obviously you can increase that, um, you know, with more expensive ATMs. Um, but that being said, what what we typically see is that you should put around fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars in that ATM to start, and the reason why you're going to do that is just so that you have a, a good starting point, a good base. That's a good base, and so based on the amount of traffic, you're going to see that I need to either increase or decrease the amount um, based on how many how many transactions I'm seeing. So if you're seeing that people are really going through this money, you might want to double it, have four thousand dollars in there. You might see that $4,000 is a sweet spot and you don't have to visit that location, but once a month. Um, now, just, kind of, just to kind of give a little background on how that works is whatever money that you put into the ATM is not going anywhere, right? So that money is either in your bank account or it's in your ATM. So your ATM is basically a vault. And so whenever you want to, you can walk up to that, to that vault and just pull that money out or vice versa. You can go to your bank account and pull that money out. All the money that gets taken out of the ATM is basically being recycled because within 24 to 48 hours, that money is deposited back into your bank account, plus that profit that you made for the day. So you're basically all the money is just going full circle. You're going to be using that same money over and over and over to make your profit. And then you're just going to the bank, pulling that money back out, putting it back into the ATM. Yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it. I feel like for other businesses and side hustles, you're going to have some kind of inventory or service that you're selling, and that's going to take time to, you know, get more inventory or something where this, yeah, you're basically just changing it from one count to another. So, yeah, it's a great way to look at it. What about, are there any cons when it comes to the ATM side hustle? Uh, I know, I feel like people, whenever they hear about this ATM side hustle, they're always worried about, you know, getting robbed while putting money in, while restocking ATMs, or people trying to steal the actual ATMs themselves, like how you see in movies. Is that the actual, actual case? How's your uh, experience been over the years? Yeah, it, it um, I mean, the, the, so just to kind of start with the overall cons in general, I think the, the, the main con, it really just depends on where you're at in your entrepreneur journey. But um, one thing that you could say as a con is, it's not easy to get your account open to do this. Um, reason being because you need to know about this industry. You need to know what we are and what we aren't in terms of where we sit in terms of uh, what type of business we are. Because sometimes we get confused with businesses that are similar to Cash App, PayPal, all those type of things where they're trading currencies, selling currencies, and holding currencies. So you need to be able to have an, a conversation with that business, with not the business owner, but the bank and be able to explain to them and articulate correctly what it is that we do so that they understand that we're not what they think we are, which is uh, considered a money services business. Um, and money services businesses, you have to be licensed by your state to run those type of businesses. So PayPal, Cash App, Zelle, all that stuff. We're not that, we're not considered that by law, but the, a lot of bank tellers, they're no different than you and I, so they don't know. And banks don't train them to know this information because the big ATM companies do not deal with bank tellers. They deal with the CEOs of the banks, you know, those big guys up there. So they don't, that information never trickles down to the bank tellers. Um, so what we will see though, is that a lot of people don't get into this industry because they don't, they can't get past that aspect of things. Um, and that's the part of the reason why I created the channel so that I could educate people on what they need to be doing to get these accounts open. Um, the second issue that I see with people have the most is finding their first contracts. Um, a lot of times people are just, some people are lazy and they just don't want to do the work. And then other people are really have tried and they have a hard time. And so that's one of the things, if you're not, um, if you're not an extrovert, like if you're not a person that is comfortable speaking with people, then this wouldn't be a good thing for you to get into because 50% of this is having conversations with somebody. 
Um, so that's one thing. And then when it comes to being robbed and things of that nature, I think that's a really valid um, concern because things like that do happen in this world and, and we can't deny that. But the reality of it is, is that you have a better chance of getting hit by a car than getting robbed at your ATM, assuming that you're not putting your ATM in the hood. That's what I always tell people. Do you plan on putting your ATM in the hood? If so, then yeah, you probably should uh, carry a little bit there. But if you don't plan on doing that, then you really don't have anything to worry about because the whole entire process of switching out your cash takes about one to two minutes. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a very, very simple process. So you're not going to be in a situation where you're like, you have the entire ATM dismantled, you have all your money everywhere, you're like iron, you're like doing all this stuff, there's nothing to do, you pull it out, you put your key in, you throw the money into the clip, you close the ATM and you walk out. Now, what I tell people is that you can stagger your schedule in terms of when you're showing up because you still want to be safe. But the reality of it is you have a very, very low um, chance of getting hit. I have over 576 students right now that I've worked with and trained personally since 2018. Not one of them has ever um, encountered an issue where they were robbed or anything like that. Well, that's great to hear, especially yeah, safety, I feel like is always a, a big concern. And then yeah. kind of going back to yeah, your one point, it sounds like, yeah, initially getting that one business or location is probably the hardest part, along with getting the, the background stuff, whether it's LLC or just talking to the bank. But I feel like I found that happen with a lot of, you know, side hustles. It's the initial steps is the, you know, the largest barrier just because people don't really know how to get started or what to do. But once you do get started and get your first location, would you say it's pretty easy or a lot easier at least to scale, you know, get your next step just because you know what to do next? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. It's, it's just like with anything else. And in a lot of cases of business, uh, in business, a lot of times you'll see that the, the big hurdles might come towards when you start getting business or you start getting clients or whatever the case may be. Um, but in this industry, the biggest hurdles really are at the beginning. You know, you're getting that account set up and then finding that initial client. Once you have, that's pretty much the top of the mountain. And once you hit that top of the mountain and it's only down here from there, it's super easy because now you know how the conversations flow. You know what the business owners um expectations are so you have an idea of what to expect in the next conversation so you carry that data with you to that next location and then it's going to get simpler and simpler and simpler and then knowing what you know you're even determined and figure out your own ways to bring clients to yourself okay and then yeah over time you're basically learning and like you said hopefully it gets easier and simpler uh, with more experience 100, 100 yeah 100 percent. i mean just to give you an, an idea of just of a brand new newbie just coming in and then really just absolutely killing it. Um, we have one of one of my students, her name is Michelle. She joined us in December. She had zero ATMs, knew nothing about the ATM business, and now she has 10 ATMs. Now, five of them, five of them we placed for her. We provided the ATM and we found the locations for her. Now, by doing that, she was able to get acclimated with the process. She understood how the business owners work because she didn't have that anxiety of all oh, this and that because we did everything for her. So now all she had to do was just hang out, learn about the business, understand the concept. And then she said, you know what? I'm ready to go do this on my own. So she went and just used some of our training and went and found five additional locations on her own. You know, and and so that is the type of growth that you can see and it can happen very quickly as because she just started the very end of December. It wasn't even the beginning. It was the end of December. So really, with it, within about two to three months, she's already scaled up to 10 ATMs and it's not even the middle of the year yet. Yeah, that's awesome. It's very impressive. I'm curious to see uh, what happens to Michelle, I guess, towards the end of the year, how many ATMs. Yeah, I don't know. She's crazy. So I don't know what she's I don't know what she's up to. <laughs> What about, is there like any other things you think people should know about for ATM business that they might not know uh, once they're getting started? I think you mentioned a few throughout the interview, but is there any else that come to mind? No, I, I think that this industry is really is super simple. And I think the concept is, is, is easy to understand. I think that the main thing that people should, should do, though, is don't look at this as like affiliate marketing or, or Amazon or anything like that. You want to look at the ATM industry as an investment. Reason being because obviously you have a lot, you have a lot of upfront hard costs on tangible uh, goods. Well, realistically, just the ATM—that's your biggest hard cost. There's really no other fees that you're going to be paying except maybe 
you know, uh, 10, 15 bucks a month for a wireless connection or, um, and that's really it. <laughs> Realistically, all, everything is pretty much done up front. Um, but I want people to look at this as like an investment. You know, if you're looking at your ATM, your ATM is twenty five hundred dollars. Um, you want to look and see what is that investment going to look like within the first 12 months? You know, and you might see a 20, 30, 20 to 30 percent return on your investment or more um, within that first 12 months. It just really it really depends. It can go all the way up to 60 percent return on your investment. Um, it just really depends on the type of location. So you do have to be flexible in your um, assumptions of what something would, should yield in terms of profit. Because like I said before, the lower echelon would be like a barbershop. You might see a couple hundred bucks there. And then you go higher. The tattoo shops are in the five, $600 range. Then you get up to bars, nightclubs, strip clubs. Now you're looking at seven, eight, $900 a month. In, in profit. So it really, it really all just depends. So, and the one thing I also recommend is to not just, not just go with one. If you're going to get into this, do it because you want to have multiple ATMs um, because that's where, that's where the money is at having the more, more locations, more money. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just really a no brainer. It's still all going to be passive and it's not going to take that long to manage. Yeah, it definitely sounds like some like a business or a side hustle that you want to scale, like you're saying with one. Right. It doesn't make sense, but that's right. It doesn't make sense any other way. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's good to know. And then yeah, those it sounds like you kind of answered it, but like how much money can you make a month with ATMs? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and like I say, it's, it really just I really, really wish I had a, a more hard number, but the, the issue is just that we work with so many different industries from the smaller end of, in terms of small businesses, we work from, like I said, the barbershops all the way up to the weed dispensaries. Uh, you, you know what I mean? With the weed dispensaries bringing the creme de la creme, the chef's kiss of the ATM business is the dispensaries because, um, and, and a lot of people know this and some people don't, but banks do not want to touch dispensaries. Reason being because banks are on the federal level and, uh, we being legalized is not on the federal level, it's on the state level. So banks are not allowed to touch weed dispensaries um, at all. They are allowed to put cash in them sometimes, but they are not allowed to do any transactions because they're afraid of, you know, chargebacks and a bunch of fake reasons. They're, they're fake reasons, but they're, they, nonetheless, they're their reasons. And so those guys have to have ATMs. They absolutely must have them. And so getting into one of those dispensaries is just a game changer, especially if you live in an area that, that has them. So say that's like the top of the market for a dispensary, how much a month would you say someone could actually profit if they were to get like a location like that then? Yeah, so you're looking at a minimum $1,000 a month, minimum. Um, but it's really, it can get, I've seen it go all the way up to as far as four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. Um, wow. So it gets it gets up there really quickly because you, when you really consider it, I mean, let's be honest, if you go to a dispensary, especially in Las Vegas or something like that, for example, the line is going to be out the door. And so every single one of those people is required to go in and get however much they're going to get out uh, of the cash of the uh, ATM. And again, when you have a limit of like two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars people are going to go and double dip. They're going to go in there and say, you know what? I, I forgot to go get these edibles over here and I'm going to get those over there. And then they're going to make a second trip to that ATM. So you're, you're making, you know, you might be making out of a $3 surcharge, $6 per person in profit. Every person that comes in there, you have a hundred people a day come in there. I mean, the numbers get astronomical really quick. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. And then what, what would you say for the, the other side of that? Like, say if you're just at like a mom and pop, restaurant or barbershop what would you say is like a typical profit uh, per month for those locations yeah barbershops and salons are typically the bottom um and that's just because they're just the basic average functioning uh, locations um but they can actually get scaled up pretty quickly as well um, it really just depends on how many chairs how many seats is in that in that barbershop how many chairs are there there's only like one or two chairs then you're not going to see very much profit. And that kind of goes hand in hand with really knowing what to look for when it comes to profitability on locations. Um, just to give a little insight there, what I always do is it, regardless of how I uh, um, came across that location, I throw that address into Google. And when I throw that address into Google, I'm looking for a couple of things. I'm looking to see if that business can be found if I typed it into Google. So if it's called Sam's Barbershop, I need to be able to type in Sam's Barbershop, type in the address, and Sam's Barbershop better be the first thing that pops up. Because if it's not, 
then that means that they're not really taking their business as seriously as we would need them to in order to have that type of traffic flow to make us to make it make make it profitable profitable for us um and i'm also looking to see if they have um google reviews do they have any reviews if they even if they have one review it means that they're trying but realistically i'm looking for a bunch of google reviews as well because that means that people are going out of their way to learn more about that business to go to that business and to search that business up um because if not and no one can find you on the internet then how are you doing any business that means that you're operating off of word of mouth and that's not always the best thing especially for um our industry where we need foot traffic we can't go off of the what ifs you know yeah that makes sense especially the, like you could be potentially missing out on the opportunity cost if one place is like marketing on google or doesn't have any uh reviews uh like you mentioned versus a company that is you're gonna get a lot more customers at the other right. one yeah, and then too, you want to look at where is this location situated at, you know, me personally, I don't like putting my ATMs in locations that are just like one offs, like if it's like a, a barbershop and it's near houses more as near more a residential area, and then there's no other businesses around it. I don't particularly like to do stuff like that unless that the Google reviews show something spectacular to me. Uh, reason being because I, I typically like to put my machines in these plazas because that means that you have opportunity everywhere there. You can either go put ATMs in other locations around the area in the plaza, or you can have your location that you already have your ATM in be your core hub. And then you go, I go door to door and start saying, hey, I just installed an ATM next door. I want you to tell your tell your customers, tell your <laughs> tell your customers, hey, we you guys need some cash? You come to that, you come to uh Jill Salon right down two doors down. You know what I mean? Like I go and I advertise my business to everyone there. And they're either going to want an ATM as well, or they're gonna say, okay, cool, yeah, we we need an ATM. They might say, I don't want one in the business per se, right this second, but we'll definitely go and send our customers um to that particular salon. So it kind of goes back to that same scenario that I mentioned earlier, having an ATM in your business increases your uh, traffic by 20%. And a plaza is a perfect example of that in motion, of looking at that in motion. Yeah, I think that's a great tip right there. ATM is located is depending on how much profit you're gonna be able to make per month. And as we talked about earlier, uh, it doesn't sound like it requires too much maintenance. Once you have the ATM, in the actual location, I think you were saying anywhere from like 15 to 20 minutes per month. Was that correct? And that's basically just dropping off and uh, resupplying the, the money within the ATMs. So, I mean, if you're looking at per an hour, uh, this is a very profitable side hustle that could potentially be for someone then. Yeah, because, and I tell people this is, as well. I mean, think about it this way. Even if, even if the your ATM that you had was only making you 200 bucks a month, and you only had to spend 10, 15 minutes a month actually going and just putting some more money in that machine, why wouldn't you do it? You know what I mean? Like yeah, it, it yeah. just does, logically, it doesn't make any sense. Not it doesn't make any sense not to do it. And even if you're a bigger investor, then buy more machines at one time. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the ATMs, the ATMs are the very last thing that you're gonna do. And the reason why I love this industry so much is because you're not going to spend any money on an ATM until you have a contract signed. So that contract has to be signed before you even go waste your time on the ATM. So basically that contract being signed is money. You know what I mean? Like that contract being signed is money. Cause you know that, hey, this is signed. I know I'm gonna make some money. And then in that contract, and this is what I tell people too, this is another a very important tip, never, sign a contract outright for any amount of years or any amount of any amount of years at all some people they get so excited with that first contract that they sign for five years and then within the first two months then you see that that location didn't profit you at, at anything at all and if that business owner is um more aggressive than you would like them to be and they're one of those people that want the ATM regardless, and you got it on paper that they there's nothing you can do. They're not going to let you out that contract, and because these contracts are legal and binding. And a lot of times, what we see is that these business owners, even the coffee shop owner, would still have a lawyer look at that contract before she signs it. Okay. Oh, wow. So what I always tell people is, you want to have a trial period in your contract, and you want to have this conversation with the owner and say, "Listen, we're going to do a two to three month trial period." If within this time, 
your customers are not seeing any value in this ATM and they're not using it, then we're going to pull the machine. We're going to have to pull the machine because your customers don't want it. Because if your customers want it, they'll be using it. You yeah, know, and when, and then also by having this conversation and putting this in your contracts, it gives that business owner the incentive to push their customers to use that machine because they're like, dang, if, if, if we're not seeing X amount of transactions a month or we're not seeing this, they're going to pull the machine. So I need to come up with some ways. I need to say, hey, uh, before you pull that card out, uh, we'll give you a gift card or something if you go use cash or whatever. And a lot of the business owners would do that. So it, it works out for both of us because we put them on their toes and we remind them that we're not putting this machine in here for fun and games. We're putting this machine in here so that we can run our business and grow our business and essentially, by extension, help your business. And so by, by setting your contract up, you have an out. And if things work out, then you can just say, okay, boom. If within those three months, everything is kosher, we're seeing the numbers we want to see, we're going to automatically extend for a year, two years, three years, five years, whatever the case may be, because now you can extend comfortably without feeling like, is this going to work out? Because you know it's going to work out because you've already seen the transactions within that trial period. Yeah, I think it goes back to like kind of creating a win-win scenario for both parties. Obviously, you want to make sure customers are using it and you're making money and being profitable. But at the same time, it's a win for the like the the store, the location, just because like the the different perks that we talked about before. But yeah, I think having the trust trial is a, a great tip right there. So yeah, kind of wrapping up here. So uh, is it too late to get started with the ATM business? Is the market too saturated? Um, no, and the reason it, it, I can see why a lot of people would say that the reality of it is if you walk out your house right now and you go to three stores right now, nine times out of 10, they're going to have ATMs. And what people do is they do just that. They'll go, they'll go check out three locations, see three ATMs and then say, okay, this is saturated. I can't do this. But that's not true. The reality of it is how many locations have you not visited? How many locations are popping up every single day? Um, if you go and look at your um, city hall's registry for the, the month, you will see that there's brand new businesses being registered every single day. Not all of them are being are opening up, but the, the point of the matter is, though, that new businesses are opening up every single day. So there's always going to be opportunity in terms of this industry. So it's not saturated at all. Um, actually, it's really just starting to pick up because most uh, we're called independent ATM deployers. Um, as uh, individual ATM operators. And so with most, a lot of people aren't doing this. Very, very few people aren't, are, are doing this. Not too many people are looking it up and it's really uh, almost an untapped market, especially since even that, because let's just say a thousand people try to get into it today, most of them are going to fail because they're just going to wing it. They're not going to do it with any sense of information. They're just going to hear about it and go do it. And then so the people who do succeed are the people who go and seek out mentors, information, um, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, and even as we go in more into digital currency and things of that nature, all we're going to do is just move over to Bitcoin ATMs or whatever. What, there's always going to be an ATM um, needed for something. Um, we're even working right now on something called cardless ATMs that are going to be available pretty soon. Uh, where you'll be tapping your phone to get access to your cash instead of your card. Okay. Yeah. It's so, something yeah. right now that banks are testing out. Yeah, it definitely sounds like there's always going to be a demand for whether it's cash or like you're saying, an evolving market, whether it's like Bitcoin or other machines in the future. So yeah, definitely a lot of potential potential with it. Um, what about who would you say, like, would you not recommend uh, ATM businesses as side hustles? Like, for example, Last week, I interviewed another YouTuber, uh, McCall, who does couch flipping. And for me, it wouldn't make sense because I don't own a truck or uh, uh, a garage to store the couches. So, nice. yeah, what about for like this that. then? <laughs> yeah, so for ATM business, is there a certain group of people you would say that this isn't for you? Maybe someone that's like an introvert gets very nervous talking to new people, or is there other people you would not recommend this for? Yeah, 100 percent, man. Honestly, the, the people I wouldn't recommend this to are people who are impatient, people who are introverted, but but do not are not able to tap into extrovert functionality. Um, and what I mean by that is me, for example, I'm an introvert. I don't like talking to people at all, but somehow that's what I do for a living. 
and that's just because I'm able to tap into the extrovert, um, you know, functionality. I mean, maybe it's for me being in the military and, and all of that, I was able to kind of come out of my shell during that time. Um, but a lot of people that are introvert don't kind of have that outlet like I do. And I know that talking to people is terrifying for an introvert. I know that firsthand because I'm an introvert. Um, and so, yeah, it wouldn't be the best for you because what I know about introverts and for me being one, when you're talking to someone, as long as the conversation is positive, you're okay and you can maintain. But then if, if they throw a rebuttal or an objection or something like that, you start sweating and you start sweating bad. And then you don't know what to say. And then the whole thing falls apart. So if you're one of those people, then, you know, just, you know, only, you know, yourselves. And if that's you, then this won't be the best for you because you're going to have the conversation with the bank. You're going to have a conversation with business owners. Um, you're going to have a conversation with a lot of people about your business. This is a easy to run business, but it's not like an e-com business where you're behind the computer and no one knows who you are. So okay yeah i think that's a great advice right there and then just kind of wrapping this all up the whole interview and everything do you have any like fi uh final remarks or any final tips you'd give for someone who is looking to get started with atms um yeah i i just think that you want to take it slow you know take it slow um don't you know don't don't jump to don't jump into it um with the wrong expectations i always just recommend going to my channel and just watching a lot of free content. We have over 174 videos on my channel about the ATM business. So I want everyone to do their due diligence. That's really the most important thing. Um, you know, I, I, I can't stress that enough. You know, me personally, I coach people. I help people um, with build their ATM business. We have a done for you service where we create the ATM business for you. So we find the clients. We do all of that stuff for you. Um, and so it, that could be a route that you want to go. Maybe you are one of those people who don't want to speak to someone and maybe you want to go that route. Then you could definitely uh, look us up and uh, we have a free Facebook group that's in the comment section of all of our videos and you can hang out in the group. We go live every week and then we give even more value there for free. So, I mean, we give a lot of stuff away for free so that everybody is, is completely educated. Um, and, you know, like I say, though, just take your time, though. I got to 50 ATMs over the course of a two or three years, just because I wanted to do it slowly. And I wanted to make sure that it makes sense to me and, and with my family and what I have going on. So um, I think it's a really good investment for the right person, I think. Okay, that's great to hear. And yeah, that was gonna be kind of be my next question. That's kind of one of the, first off say thank you, you know, for joining this conversation in the interview. And then also uh, where they could find out more about you, whether it's your YouTube program, we'll be leaving links down below. Uh, the Facebook group you just mentioned and any other, I guess, uh, services, whether it's like a program or one on one, we'll leave those links below. But yeah, is there, I guess, what's the best way to contact you if someone has any questions or just kind of wants to learn more about the, the ATM business? Um, yeah. So so right now we're, we're extremely busy right now. So I, I do apologize if anyone tries to reach out to me um, where it's just it's that time of the year. Where everyone everyone wants to start an ATM business, and I'm the guy they go to, so um, I'm pretty popular. Uh, but what I what I really want everyone to do though is honestly go hang out on my YouTube channel, get get acclimated to what it is that we do, learn about the ATM business, get familiar with it. Inside of any of the the um, the last couple of uh, videos that we did, I actually put together a brand new full course. It's 100 free. It's an hour long. And it breaks down how to start your ATM business step by step by step from the LLC process all the way to finding your first client. And by going through that, you'll understand if this is for you or not. And if you want to reach out to me and ask any questions, um, hit any of those links. It'll take you to uh, VSL and you'll be able to join our free Facebook group. And then myself or someone on my team can answer any questions you have there. And then, like I said, I go live every single Wednesday. Um, inside of the group and you guys can ask me questions there as well and I can answer them right there in front of you in real time so all right awesome uh, and yeah like I said we'll be leaving links down below if anyone wants to check that out for any of the viewers but Thomas yeah thank you for taking the time today to answer all of our questions and helping us learn a lot more about the ATM business oh yeah I'm, I'm here if you guys have any more questions I have a lot more to say <laughs> all right, awesome thank you and I'll talk to you later all right cool all right bye 
Huge thanks again for Thomas for all the great advice and tips on how you can get started making thousands of dollars per month with ATMs. If you want to learn more about ATMs, feel free to check out his channel and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below what side hustle you would like for me to do an interview for next. If this video brought you any kind of value, please make sure to subscribe and share the video. Feel free to check out my other videos all about different side hustles that I personally have tried and learn more about personal finance. I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Kevin, your financial tutor, signing off. Peace.